Hey guys, um, I'm back here at Texas Archery with Raymond. Uh, so in the last video, I tested both the V3X33 and the 29, and I decided on getting the 33 inch model. So, um, so there it is. It's a black riser with- Granite limb. Granite limb. So Raymond's gonna really, put it really together. Good. So uh, let's start the bow build. Do it. Are you doing eventually any colors or anything on this? Any colored strings? Yeah, um, I did order some. Are those for, for this guy? Yeah. So for the strings, we're going with a, a twisted X. You got a, looks like a flow orange and white with a black pin strike. That's correct. Really, really good. Yeah, so it's a BCY good. string material. It's their X99 okay. or 99X, <laughs> one of the two. Yeah, these are gonna look really good on here though. I guess we'll do this first before we do anything else. All right, we'll thanks Shane up. from um, Twisted X Bowstrings for, I mean, it's not a hookup, but um, <laughs> for building good strings. So when I'm pressing this, I'm making sure that the ears are grabbing them, you know, equally, because I don't want it one limb pulling harder than the other. Because we got to actually take the axles out to be able to restring this bow oh, okay. because of the yoke system. So it's mm. not like most bows where you can just pop on a string and cable. On all the newer Matthews for the past couple of years, you've had to actually remove the axles and the cams to get the yoke on. Let's get a couple tools. I know nothing about building bows, so uh, glad that you mentioned that. I uh, appreciate you letting me be the first one to uh, work on this thing. So you're saying that I can't replace the strings using the SAS? You, are you talking about the new system Matthews came out with? Yeah. You definitely can. You just gotta know what you're doing. <laughs> it's uh, it's something you want to try before you get out in the field. If you uh, if you really plan on intending to use that thing, yeah, you, you need to make sure you know how to, to work it. But you wouldn't be able to remove the. I mean, you can replace the strings and cable, but not right. the the um, what do you call that thing? The, the yoke. yoke. Yeah, it's it's mainly just for the cables. Um, at that point, you know, you're okay. just replacing from here down and from here up. Okay. SAS stands for Stay a Field System. Yep. I'm just getting everything apart here. That way we know we've got all the pieces we need. But uh, we're being careful not to lose twist as okay. well. Because Twisted X has got these things right where we want them, usually within a half a twist or so. So we really don't want any twist coming out of these cables. So I'm just laying everything nice and flat so they're not unwinding. I'm not sitting here playing with them, anything like that. Um, I've already removed this bolt, so I'm gonna do the top. Actually, I've already done that one too. So we're ready to remove an axle. Just push, axle comes out. I can take this cam and lift it right out. And from here, we just remove our yoke. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on there right now, just so it's not flopping all over the place. There we go. And always pay attention to which one's crossing through the roller guard where. I generally do one at a time just to save myself some time because you get this thing completely pulled apart and then you're wondering where things go. So Matthews does not serve the end loops, so they're easy to pull out of here. They don't give you any oh, okay. hesitation whatsoever. On a lot of these aftermarket companies, gas bow strings, twisted X, 
a lot of these other ones, they serve the end loop so they don't fit as well through the roller guard. So sometimes you actually have to remove the roller guard to get the string cables in. Normally, you could just slide them in from the side, just like that, but we have to go through the yoke, so we have to put that on first. Okay. Separated. So this can be fun, making sure all the strands are in there. And we got it. Okay. Take my yoke that I removed. what I'll do, I don't know if you plan on keeping the stock string cables, but we'll put the paper clips back on those. Okay. That way you don't lose any twists, because you never know, you may get into a bind and actually need those. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep them, so uh, if... So we'll put the clips on there, that way, you know, all the twists, you know, stay the same there as well. So the, the, they'll be my here. backup strings. When I'm putting this splitter they have on here, I pull it straight into the yoke, but I'm also trying to make sure that it's, it's even, you know, I've got the equal amount of serving on each side. And it's not like something like this or something. Okay. You want this to pull in a, in a straight line if at all possible. And you can adjust it when you get on the bow as well. Pull my axle back out. Put on one yoke at a time. And it's normal for these things to come on and off during this process. We're just trying to get it through here. That way we can put the axle back in. So this is where you wanted to make sure those ears are pretty even here when you're pressing this bow because if not you've got to flex the cam a lot to get the axle so i should just have to barely press on it and give it a little tap and it goes right back in okay nice i never want to bang on them too much but you know just a little little Good. persuasion and it, it goes right in give it a love tap yep kind of in there that's got a lot of slack in it so oh so you gotta it. so now I pull it and i've got them all tied again all right Check this in you know sometimes when these do fight you you can put a little wax on them it kind of holds all the strands together there it is We got lucky because they left us a little section that was you know, pulled out that's unserved. So I can just come in from the side here and just kind of work it and it pops right in instead of taking apart the whole roller guard. I see. So here. And that cable is done. So now we got both cables on. Only thing left is string. Alright. Starting to look good. Hell yeah. Are we right next to an airport? What's that? Yeah, that's what it sounds like, right? <laughs> that new saw is a little on the loud side. It sounds like an airplane. But we actually okay. are kind of by an airport. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that I've got everything on, this is a good time for me to go back and make sure everything's in its, in its right place. So it's real important to check the bottom of things that you can't really see from the top. Mm -hmm. So I always just run my fingers along the bottom of the cam, to make sure it's in track. And then same thing with these yokes, you know, just kind of inspect them, everything that it's supposed to be, you know, running around that post, everything's connected. 
It's tracking to the roller guard good here. Um, same thing down here. Cable's on good. I feel around the bottom of the cam, it's good. The yokes are good. And then from there, what I do is I'll put tension on, but I just give it a little tug. If anything was barely on and it's getting ready to pop off, that it would it would have popped off. So I just give it a little tension, and then from there, we can go ahead and start relaxing. But I'm gonna put in this glass action bolt on the top and bottom. And run that in. And you don't want to over tighten these. So what I do, let me get a little bit of more pressure off the uh, bow itself here. So I'll tighten it just to where it's snug. And then I roll the cam a little bit. I make sure there's no resistance there. Cause if you really crank these down on both sides, you can actually pinch the limb so tight that the cam will, will oh, give you some hesitation. So I don't have any play there. It's, it's floating there. It's good. That's a good stopping point. I'll do the same thing on the top. And we're, we're good to go. So run this in. Until it gets snug, there it is. Same thing, no resistance there, so we're good. So here I'll put my last bit of pressure on the string, pulling straight up, checking everything before it comes out of the press, and then we relax. And there she is. So you can see once everything's settled, the bottom yoke is perfect, but this one is perfect. So spin it a little bit. Starting to look good, man. Mm, that looks perfect to me. Major strings. Cool. All right, strings are on. It's time to put on all the accessories. So if you want, now's the time if you do want to change this. I can change the color of this cord. Okay. You want to throw some just to match in it, there, yeah. Or just do black or whatever. Yeah, let's you do, want to do let's do orange. Okay. Yeah, that'll look Let's good. let's get co color coordinated. So I like to leave myself just a little slack on the back side. That way, if I get it on there and get everything timed and tied mm -hmm. in, everything's locked in place down here, if I need to make any last minute adjustments. Give you some I can play. Yeah, some I can room. have some play there. Your are gonna Instead of having to completely redo the timing on it. I don't leave much, because we're gonna get it to where we shouldn't even have to use that. Get that nice and snug, and now that cord will never come out of there. So when we get to the D loop, obviously I'm assuming you're gonna to wanna to go orange on the loop as well, but what sure, kind of yeah. knock sets do you want? Um, you mean color? Yeah, for the inside, the, the knock sets will put yeah, on um, between the loop. Just, hmm, I don't know, it's black. Okay, Let's make it black. 
So all I did was just, you, this is really important because you don't want to over tighten this. You can see the, the internal mount on this QID is not uh, really, really beefy. So you never want to over tighten that little, little set screw there, just snug. And then you follow it up with this cap here. Is there like a default setting on Where I these? usually go, yeah, so out of the package. Do, do, do you put it on zero? Because it came off another bow. Yeah. But what I do, come back around on this side. So if you look right here, there's an arrow. And it's gonna be really hard to see, not the arrow, but the spot I'm gonna take on the riser. So there's a little arrow right there on the rest itself. Okay, yeah, But then I there's see a little that. tick mark in the riser. It's so right you got there. The, so you, you can to line see that, that I've got the arrow perfectly in line with that tick mark on the riser. That's a good starting point. It's very hard to see, but there is a little itty bitty tick mark in the riser. Yeah, you can see it right there. So you can see we're pretty even with that right now. And then from there, we'll micro it up and down. It's just how, a good starting how, how point. How about the left to right? Left is to there... right, yours is gonna be pretty close because it came off another Matthews bow, but I'm okay. sure we'll move it a little bit. Um, you know, every company has a, a I guess a go-to center shot. Um, mm -hmm. What we'll usually do is start at the center of the riser and shoot through paper until we reach where we're happy we're getting the best flight. All right, rest is on. Come back to this. I'm actually gonna put in the drawboard first. Um, because before I get these knock, si knock sets tied in, loop tied in, I want to get the bow timed as good as possible. We haven't shot it yet, but I want a good starting point. Uh, because if I get this perfectly level, 90 degrees from the bow and the rest, everything's great, and all of a sudden we start adding or taking away twisting your cables, this goes uphill and downhill. So we got to redo everything. So we might as well get it timed right now. All I'm doing is putting your drop away cord in real quick. And then I'm going to throw it on the draw board. Just right here, we're just splitting evenly. This is going in your down cable. from the factory where timing lands. You know, just straight out of the box. It is very normal to do half a twist, a twist here and there from the factory. That's, that's pretty normal. Um, but usually they get it pretty spot on. All right. So as I'm drawing this bow, the rest is actually taking out the slack it needs. Um, so it's, it's pretty much timing the rest for us as well. You can see it's taking out at whatever it needs as you draw the bow. Alright, we're getting close to the end here. So, I'm going to kind of slow down and really start looking. And this is actually not bad. So, you're going to see right now, I just hit on the bottom and the top hit too. That is perfect. Straight out of the package. Nice. So that looks really good. And here I'll actually kind of mess with the rest timing too. I want it coming up right there at the very end. So right there, the rest fully engaged. And you can see I'm right towards the end there. So I'm not gonna be pulling on this cable really hard. Uh, you know, you don't want this coming up too early is all I'm getting at. And that is, dude, that is perfect. Yeah, that is perfect. Okay, great starting point. I like it. All right, now we can put on your D loop and your knock sets. All right, same arrows as your other setup? Yes, okay. the arrow's right behind you. Perfect. It's a Victory Vap TKO. You really like those arrows, huh? Like I do. I wish you guys carried them here. We are going to very soon. The arrows have been pretty tricky for us to get this year along with everything else. All right, so I just try and get an equal tag in here. I've got plenty to work with, but these things have to be really tight. So I, I, I always cut a little long, that way I can wrap around my hand once or twice and really cinch them in and dig them in. Um, 
But we need to get level before we do all that. So, do you ever see yourself shooting any other knock, like with these arrows? Uh, lighted knocks or anything? Or you, you Probably not. Okay, good. So we're, we can set these knock sets for this size knock. A lot of times if somebody's going to be shooting a lighted knock, they're a little wider, so you got to yeah. leave in more room. We don't have to worry about that right now. So right now, I'll put the level on the string and get the, get the bow straight up and down. And that looks happy. So we're not too worried about the left and right, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. And front to back is what we're really concerned with. So right there is perfectly level on the bow itself. So I can see already we're a little knock low. Um, so I'm going to have to come up with that knock set some. So we're going to put a level on it and confirm that. And it's definitely knock low. But that's just a start. So from here, I'll move this knock set up just, just a little bit. can be a little tricky to set at first. Once you dig in that first knot, they do not move. So on the knock sets, how many how many around the So some people do you... will do three, some people will do two. I used to do three, but <clears throat> it opened up the loop so much it just didn't honestly look right. So mm. I've gotten to where here lately I do two. I'll do two and then the last one I cinch in between and it bites everything together. Okay. And it, uh, it just looks a little more natural in the D-loop. I mean, it doesn't perform one way or the other any better. It just looks better. So you can see right now, the bow is level. We've got our first knock set on. And I want to say we're pretty level on the bubble here on your arrow. This is what we're looking at, too. So that's, that's what we're looking for. It's a, a good starting point. Everything's looking solid in the arrow. And you can look, you know, if you get even with the arrow here, right here, It'll throw you off, but if you kind of kneel down and get eye level with the arrow, it's running through the center of the fiber button as well. Oh, nice. All okay, that's that's starting, a good thing. These are, these are just starting points. Um, from here, we'll paper tune it, and it'll tell us really where it wants to be. But you can't go wrong with level right out the gate. So now I got the first one dug in. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the arrow for a second, get it out of the way, and then finish out the knock set. I know we're level where we can really cinch them in. So I just like laying it flat. It's easier to get these things dug in. So I've done one, and then you just kind of alternate, one on top, one on bottom. Usually look through itself twice. These you won't be able to see very well because it's black on black, but they're there. So I've done my two, now I'm doing the last one where it bites in between the first and second knot. And there's your knock set. And from here we just burn it. First one. All right, time to tie on the dealer. D-loop material, are they the same as string material? Or are they no, totally def different? definitely completely different. Uh, D-loop material, is um, it's definitely obviously a lot thicker. So this is made up of several, several different strands. You probably saw earlier in the video where we were playing with the strands up top. This is just one solid piece, but it has an internal core. This stuff is very, very strong, along with the bowstring as well. But you only want to use stuff that's, that's rated for dealer material. You're going to be pulling all the weight back with this, and you want to make sure you get a good nail head uh, for when you tie your half hitch on the string don't want that thing pulling through, obviously. So this is where we just get 
get it on there and we slide it down so we hit that first knock set and there's half of it right there And depending on the loop length, um, have all the string here, but we'll play with loop lengths too here in a minute. But this would be a good starting point. Yep, definitely open it up quite a bit. The bigger you open it up, the bigger the nail head's going to be. You're not trying to really completely catch it on fire. I'm just trying to get it right to that point and then just slowly smash it down. If you push it really hard, really fast, you don't get the, the shoulder on that nail and it makes it really oh, thin. Looks perfect. It makes it really, really thin. So if you're patient with it and get it just right, you'll get a perfect uniform Ooh, nail head all the way around. That. On both top Man. and bottom. And I'm not gonna cinch it down yet because it's not dry, but I am gonna get a little of the slack out of it. We're just gonna let that sit for a second until it cools off and then I'll cinch it tight. Nice. Looking good. It's starting to look like a bow. Kind of good if you got in that orange thing over there. Oh, I have the, um, my peep. Not sure what size peep. Um, I'll be using. There's our D loop. That looks perfect. Yep. Got nice. Top of knot, knot, spot, bottom knot set. All right, so this is your, your sidebar mount, your front, quick disconnect, and then your sight. You don't shoot a wrist sling, do you? I do not. Okay. No. So we can go ahead and put this right on the front of the bow. So we're using a shrewd front uh, quick disconnect. Uh, it's a eight, it degree. Like eight degree down, yeah. Yeah. And also using an ultra view uh, B real grip. Where it's straight up and down, nice and tight. So for the site, I'm using the Spot Hog Hog Father. It's a three pin. Uh, it's the triple stack model. You do like this ring? I do like that ring. So okay. it's a smaller ring. Yep. Yeah, because you've got two other sizes here. That one's definitely bigger. And same thing on this other one. Yeah, that's the one I'd use too. I like that one. So what size peep do you think I'll use? Because I, I was using the, I think it was a quarter inch. Let's see what you got here. Watch your box. It's a tackle box. <laughs> I think this this is the quarter. Okay, so what this is, this but is a special I, tool archery. That is I, a quarter inch aperture, but the end of the I do have is a 316. I do have that one as well. Okay. It's smaller. 
So this one, when you put the reducer in it, you're gonna make it an eighth inch. Are you gonna run uh, like a clarifier or anything? Are you doing yeah, magnification? Yes. Because I think with this one right now, with the clarifier, mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, space. Okay. Now, are you gonna actually put a scope in the lens though? I, I mean, won't. I'm sorry, a uh, lens in the scope? I won't. Okay. Your cables are very, very close. So we're gonna look at those in the draw board and see what everything looks like. But we should be wow. okay. Yeah, this is a longer dovetail mount here. I mean, it's not touching it, but. Well, we'll have to see what they do at full draw too. Yeah. I think it'd be better if I Pushed it out one. I think that'd be a better starting point, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay, what's that? So that still up against it, but not, not as bad. All right. All right, so now that it's on there, we're gonna get it level. adjustments to make so if you get where I'm at you can see the bubble here on this hamski level so we know the bow's running straight up and down okay now we have to get the sight you the can sight. look at your okay. sight and see that it's off right now so that's a what, second axis yeah so we're gonna do the first and the second okay or we'll do you know some sites have first second third some only have second and third I think this depends. one only has second and third I'm not Correct. quite sure yeah so you have right here and then you have up front as well. Okay. And those are both your axes on this side. So what you have to do is kind of loosen this one and tighten the other one in. Pivot the way you want it. So this one, you're correct. It does have second and third. And the other one from like right and third. So is that one for the second? Yes. I get both those little lockers loose. So because I loosened these little side ones first, it's already moved on me. already much much better I like to leave them just a little snug so you can slide it so come around and check this out now we know the bow's level but yeah, so. awesome and now Third axis we'll do later on at, at full draw. Is really where you're supposed to uh, do it. Did it move on me or is it still there? Still there. Okay, go ahead and put it here. Alright, that one's done. We're almost to a point where we can actually go and shoot this thing. Sure. Uh, now Ray is putting on the peep sight and a nose button. Yep. I've already shot the bow uh, 12 to 15 times. Stretch everything out. It, it just it helps keep the peep sight straighter. I think if you if you shoot the bow before you put in the peep sight, it, it usually works to your benefit. Awesome. All right. So. So I'm just using a uh, specialty archery peep. I'll be putting a verifier in there. Uh, my eyesight's not the best. Let's flip this. So that 
piece is actually supposed to go up. There it goes. So now, I'm not gonna tie anything in. We're gonna go out there, and this is free floating, so I can move this up and down, and same thing for the peak. We've got a mark on there from when you drew it back, but I don't wanna tie anything until you green light it. Okay, sounds good. Let's go check it out. Okay, now we're a race tying in, now race tying in the peep. Yeah, we're gonna tie in the peep, the nose button, the nose button. and your uh, dropaway cord. Awesome. We're gonna tie in all, all three. I'm gonna do. that one. There it is. Nice. So what's next? Paper tune it. Okay. That or should be the last and final step. How about the site? Do we need to set the no, we'll do second that. Second we'll, last? No, so the, we've already done the second. The third will be at the very, very last phase okay. of everything. Um, I've already got it fairly close. In, in the bow vise earlier, you can usually get them close. You're really supposed to do them at full draw because it changes the torque on the riser at full draw. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so now we're going to paper tune. From here, it looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks pretty good. First shot. <laughs> First shot. Let's see where it. Right down the center, too. 
We're gonna go check it out. Oh wow, that's pretty. Yeah, I mean it. It's gonna be small, small adjustments, if any. I mean, there's there's not much to correct there because you gotta think you you're the tip of this arrow. That point, that's a big point, you know, compared to the arrow yeah. itself. So that's a good for a first shot. That's pretty yeah, good. That, that is awesome. All right. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to improve on that. That pretty much got a ball if you look at it like that. Yeah. So I mean, I just leave it alone. Right now, I don't think we're gonna mess with it. Okay. Right now. Be okay. Now we're setting our third axis. Ray's helping me with this. There you go. Once you're there and you've got the top of that pin and the bottom on it. Uh, and you're kind of looking at your level at the same time. Yeah, it's uh it's not it's in not, the middle. Okay. Whenever you're ready, just let down and then you'll just talk to me and tell me what you saw. So it's basically on the on bubble the is, on, is on the left okay. line. That's pretty normal. Just, but right just a little bit. Okay, so it's, it, it's, it, touching. It's, it's touching. It's touching. Yeah. But the, the left inside. edge of that bubble is touching the left line. Okay, perfect. I know exactly what you need to do. Okay. I'm going to steal it for a second and I'll bring it right back. Okay, now I'm double checking my third axis if it's good after the adjustment. It's good. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is a speed test on the chrono. Uh, in a previous video, I had a, a Barebow V333 uh, with stock strings, and uh, my new bow has Twisted X strings. Uh, I did remove the monkey tails. I didn't see any performance benefit, or, um, you know, it didn't really dampen the, uh, vibration or noise so I just took them off but you know this one does have a nose button and the peep um, the stock v333 clocked at 277 feet per second using a uh, 440 grain victory vap arrow so I'll be using the same arrow but with the nose button and the peep this one's going to be a little slower. So I'm still using a 70 pound mod and the draw length is uh, 28 on the draw board, uh, but the mod is uh, 27 and a half. All right, that one came in at 271 feet per second. So it's uh, six feet per second slower. Um, V3X33 is finally done. Just gonna shoot a little bit. 
hanging out with Ray. Just chilling. Chilling. I'm using a 65 pound uh, draw weight right now. Um, so I don't beat up my shoulders and my arms too much. <laughs> I was using 70. The draw is still smooth. Man. You literally don't even hear that bow going. Almost. You just, you just hear the arrow hitting the target. Almost no vibration. And um, yeah, you're right. It's quiet. Sweet shooting bow, Ray. Sweet shooting bow. We're, we're both gonna, uh, the three of us, he's also shooting a V3X33. I think we're gonna have diabetes after, uh, before the end of the year. Very sweet shooting bow. Back wall solid. I'm happy with this. Nope, no string dampeners. Man, a fly fart is louder than this. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, the only thing you hear is uh, the arrows That's hitting the, the target. There you go. We are done. We're here at Texas Archery with Ray. Spring, Texas. Come visit them. I know Ray can't recommend any bows, but I'm partial. Mm -hmm. So get a Matthews. Get a Matthews. Thank you.